And welcome to our second live podcast, our second live Mystical Mavens episode, Beauty, Brilliance, and Badassery. My name is Lassia Kahoot, Soul Excavator, and today with me are the esteemed, amazing, badass, powerhouse reverends in the house, Reverend Andrea Arlington, Reverend Dale Olansky, and Reverend Lori Savage. And today we are talking about that spiritual badass that we all are at our core, and we are talking about embracing the divine feminine. So the divine feminine can mean a lot of things to different people. It can be that innate sacred wisdom that is nurturing, that is loving, that is peace, that is balance. But it can also be that amazing powerhouse, that spiritual badass that we all are at our core. And so today, Reverend Dale Olansky is going to kind of take the helms and, and be our superhero guiding light force and is going to guide us with some <laughs> with some thoughts and questions to ponder to consider if you have anything that you want to add to the conversation any questions that you want to ask us then please feel free to send in your comments um, but for now i guess we're going to start off with a question that everyone's going to have a chance to answer and that is what makes you a spiritual badass so i'm just going to go ta-da for me and hand it on over to Reverend Dale. Okay, well, I, this is just so fun to dive into. Um, what makes me a spiritual badass is my magic wand, because I know that our word, our consciousness is our wand that creates a great life. And I love Florence Govelshin, who was a new thought uh, writer in, gosh, the turn of the century, uh, excuse me, the turn of the, the 20th century. And she was all about the, the, the word being your power. And so I'm a spiritual badass because I know that my word is my power and I use that word and I use that power and that consciousness everywhere I go. And so that's what makes me a badass. So Reverend Lori, what about you? My tenacity. I never give up. I have a, a picture here. Look, I'll show you. My friend gave this to me. It says, she who never gives up. Nice. And I framed it because that's just who I am. Whatever comes up, I just keep moving forward. And so I think my tenacity and my stick to itedness and my determination all combine to make me a badass and knowing who I am. I mean, that's really the most badass thing you can know <laughs> is who you are. How about you, Reverend Andrea? Well, um, you know, most of all, I'd like to say just knowing who I am. And if you hear the dogs in the background, there's three of them here and they are not quiet. But um, basically, you know, um, it wasn't until I hit, you know, my 40s, 50s that I really started to feel like it was a badass, even though um, in my younger years, I was really good at manifesting shit. Like I manifested the centerfold for Playboy. I manifested dating the bass guitarist of Pink Floyd, literally. And I'd been in love with the band since I was 12 years old. So it was like totally amazing. Um, I And I have manifested my own reality show uh, that I had back in 2010 on E! Entertainment. So like manifesting shit is something that I'm really good at. But I'll say this about that. Now that now that I've got the awareness that I do, like you all have been sharing um, about who I truly am, um, life gets to be so good when you know who you are. And um, that's really my biggest uh, badassery kind of testimony that I can give. <laughs> Thank God for this teaching. <laughs> right. Well, that that dot, that pulls us into our place where we're going to start. It's all about this whole idea of the divine feminine. And, and I think the reason why I wanted to bring it to this group, because this is this is the epitome of badassery right here in <laughs> the four of us. Um, and we are the we, we do embody the divine feminine in different forms and different styles. And I think right now in our world and, you know, I'm all about what's what's present in our world right now and interacting with it and coming at it with this spiritual 
wisdom and understanding and activation. And I, I think right now where our world is, we the, the feminine is really getting ready to play and play big. And so that's why I thought, well, let's talk about the divine feminine and its role in our world today and, and how these beautiful goddesses see the divine feminine within themselves and, and how they show up in their lives as such. So our first question is, what does divine feminine mean to you? And how does it influence your spirituality? How do you bring that all together? Does anybody want to start? I'll go. Um, this this was a this was a really great question, Reverend Dale. Thank you very much for asking it. And and for me, it was a great question because I have to say, even though I do consider myself a badass, the divine feminine is not something that I have spent a lot of time cultivating within myself. I mean, I grew up in a family where there was a lot of love, but there was also a lot of achievement and do, 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 and go, 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 and just lots and lots of doing, lots and lots of being in the head, lots of thinking. And um, and so especially really over the last four years, as I've kind of, you know, really come into the, the crux of my spiritual journey so far, then I feel my heart opening up and I feel this softening and this tenderness taking place, which even though I've always considered myself a very sort of feeling and open kind of person, um, it really it really has been a huge thing for me to drop down from my head into my heart and to really open myself up to just being and to just really embracing that beautiful tenderness that is at my core. And I think most of all, especially for myself, I mean, even even though we sort of say, you know, you can't give to others until you give to yourself, a lot of times it's felt easier to, you know, shower the love and the feelings and the tenderness and that kind of stuff on other people. But ultimately to really, really feel it for myself and to be able to trust that, you know, I do know who I am and, and that because of that, that I can just open myself up and and really allow for that to come through and to listen, you know, for what it is that wants to be heard and felt. That's, that's a huge, huge thing for me and a massive shift that has only very recently taken place for me. Wow, that's cool. How about you, Reverend? Oh, Reverend Glory, yeah. You know, I, I'm gonna say very similar journey. I very much came from my head and was, a doer and a being wasn't really in my in in my peripheral vision even it was it was a very um constant pulsing forward without a lot of stopping to just be and to just sit and to spend time creating and i think that's the thing i appreciate so much about the this teaching that we we all share the the science of mind is that it it does direct you towards the being and the creative side and that the work that is done is internal, not external. It comes from the stillness. It comes from the quietness. It comes from the heart. And I so appreciate that. And it's something I still continue to remind myself to slow down, to breathe, to stop, to check in with my, my intuition. Um, what wants to happen here? What wants to happen through me? To me, that's that divine energy. That the energy of of creation is the is the divine feminine. Um, and then execution is to me more the divine masculine. The more the doing. And so I I'm not really a a girly girl. <laughs> I have never been a, a um, you know, I was a tomboy as a little kid. And uh, as I grew up, I'm much more about comfy sneakers and high heels. I think the last time I wore heels was on my wedding day. And I regretted, I regretted every second of it. <laughs> I did. I remember standing up at that altar going, what was I thinking? Oh, my God, don't let me fall over. You know, it was just, and not what you want to be thinking about. Sorry, Don. Um, I think my husband's out there watching. Uh, so it's, it's a really great topic for me to continue to go a little bit deeper. And I've been thinking a lot about, okay, what has my journey been there? And, uh, I'm really loving my feminine side these days. I'm really loving my softer, quieter side. 
How about you, Reverend Audrey, Andrea? I almost called you Audrey. I'm sorry, Reverend Andrea. No, so quite, that's quite all right. Hey, you know, um, gosh, I think that um, you know, I too have lived primarily from my masculine energy, but not from spiritually masculine energy, but really from um, living in reaction to feeling unworthy and, and feeling like I had to conquer and control all of the things that I was afraid of in my life. Um, I, I was really very controlling and conquering and willful um, because I was living in reaction to a belief system that I wasn't worthy of just mm. being loved because of who I am, not because yeah. of what I do, right? And so I was very performance-based as a young person, um, uh, you know, people pleasing and, um, and found myself in unhealthy situations and in unhealthy relationships um, because I was always driven by this need to feel loved, but it was not um, from an internal place, which is what that divine feminine really, truly, for me, it is this awareness that um, I'm lovable because I exist. Um, I am lovable. Sorry, this dog is so vocal. Sorry, guys. Um, there's nothing I can do about Striker. <laughs> um, anyway, so you know, um, we didn't, I didn't. Hear him. I thought oh, you were. Yeah, I thought you were so just hungry. No, he's so funny. He's so loud. He just talks, right? And anyway, so he's, he's amazing. But so yeah, so the divine feminine for me. Um, you know, really didn't start to wake up until after I had been married to men um, who were very um, challenged with substance use disorder, and I was very conquering and controlling. I think looking back, you know, and I also had two daughters that were IV heroin addicts, so I was always about conquering and controlling and trying to fix and control and all that stuff, which is the toxic male energy, or at least that's how it was experienced by the people that, that, that I was in relationship with. Um, if I had had the divine feminine um, awareness, that beautiful, unconditional love, non-judgment, co-connection, um, you know, seeking, um, seeking to have connection instead of conquering and controlling, I think that, I, first of all, I probably would have chose different partners. Um, and I would have been able to respond um, in a way that was so connecting and so loving and so compassionate, which is what I teach families to do today because I'm a family recovery coach, right? But um, I teach people how to respond probably, I guess you could say, from the divine feminine, um, that nonviolent uh, way of communicating and viewing all of life um, in a way that that acknowledges we are one and we are all connected in a, in a deeply, profoundly beautiful way. Beautiful. I love um, that. Yeah. I, um, I've had such an interesting relationship with femininity my whole life because I, I had a mom that was, had a lot of masculine energy. And so I wasn't, I wasn't sure about my role with that feminine energy because I early on thought that, that, that a person couldn't, embody both qualities and and still be able to manage it all and so for me the the divine feminine was just a blessing to come into the concept because um i think for me divine feminine is like what you all have already spoke to it's this nurturing creative soft yet yet strong energy that is that is really a balancing energy that i, I think for our world right now it's, it's so we're so in need of it um, but for me, it was really cool to be able to find this, the thread of strength for me has been a real empowerment in my journey through um, getting more connected with that divine energy to be able to see that that's a role that's very important in expressing the divine feminine. It isn't just about you know, being um, you know quiet or calm, but it's also about being able to express the quality of that affirming life force that we carry and the creative and the soft and and so i love that that the divine feminine is coming out more prominently in our world and and that there's really a lot of people who are ready to channel it in but um but i i it influences my spirituality in a huge way because i i just i go to that place within to center myself and to uh to empower my expression of who i am i, I really love being able to connect with something that that gives me some form and some 
some kind of like structure to be able to pull in this this expression that I am and the divine feminine is a great it's a great pattern for me. So so that's my experience with the divine feminine and where I'm at with it now. Ladies, did do any of the other mavens have an, any other input on this question that we're we're swimming in right now? I, I just think it's really interesting how there are so many similarities with all of us and where we came from and, and where we are now. And um, and it was just really it was really neat for me to hear that there's been sort of that general arc, you know, and at least some way for all of us. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I'm wondering if, you know, what is the influence of the collective consciousness around feminine uh, and, and, you know, any thoughts on how that's influenced our journeys, because they are so similar. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of beliefs around femininity and what femininity is in the world and what it's supposed to be and what it's supposed to look like. And I'm, I'm sure all of us have broken out of that, but for our viewers, perhaps they're looking to break out of the perceived idea of what femininity is. So I was reading a little bit about that on a couple of different websites in the last couple of days. And, um, you know, I think in our culture, um, competition um, was uh, um, equated with success. Um, and um, not just in, in uh, the professional world, but personally as well. So we see um, women um, <clears throat> trying to comp compete with what you see in the media that a woman is supposed to look like. Um, you see women competing mm -hmm. with other women in the workforce for, other, for, for men's approval. Um, you see... Um, let's see one of the, here, I'm just taking a quick look. Um, um, we're brought up in a society that often advocates for the rational, um, logical decision-making mm -hmm. rather than the intuitive, um, heartfelt decision-making. Um, let's see. So, it, and, and this one particular woman, um, her last name is Kingsbury. She was interviewed by Bustle, which is a women's, um, online magazine, which I love. It's by Vice magazine. Um, and, uh, um, she was talking about the fact of the matter is that the cognitive mind often misses red flags when making decisions and that the body, the, you know, the, the feeling part of us, um, actually knows before the brain does what's in our best interest. Mm -hmm. And how to um, how to connect with your innate intuition um, to make to make authentic decisions for yourself that are not driven um, by the just the cognitive rational mind. Um, so, okay. And one thing that she said was that one um, thing to, that you can do is to. Um, Oh my God, that dog. Um, because we have been separated from the divine feminine so long, we've lost our ability to truly understand our intuitive voice. There's a softer voice that exists below the inner critic um, and it celebrates mm -hmm. you. And this voice is the voice of possibility, which allows you to be more creative and reminds you of, of how powerful and, and um, um, empowering the taking risks are and, and that you are resourceful when you go beyond this cognitive linear type thinking. So just thought I'd now, share that. Now with you. that's badass. <laughs> Seriously. No, really that still small voice is the badass part of us, yeah. not the rational mind. It's the one that says all is well and just go forward. It, it tells you to, to go into those caves, right? And, and seek yeah. out um, your, your rational voice, your monkey mind will never tell you to do that. It mm -hmm. will just tell you, no, sit down. Don't do that. <laughs> danger, danger, Will Robinson. But the, <laughs> God, I just dated myself. Um, <laughs> but that still small voice is always like all is well and it's encouraging. And like you said, it's, it's that land of possibility. Um, yeah, I love that. I love that. That still small voice has been, um, tuning into that and tuning into my own intuition has always mm -hmm. guided me in the right direction. And when I don't listen to it, yikes, I, you know, it, it never turns out well. 
<laughs> I'll always end up listening to it eventually. <laughs> now I've kind of learned to listen to it the first time then until I don't make it, you know, the still soft voice come up to a yell before I pay attention now. Yeah. That's been a great life lesson. I, I love that. And, you know, we're, we're and I know you're, uh, we that are, we're all badasses and I know we're all <laughs> spiritual leaders and, um, you know, we're pull, we're driving the bus into new territory because we, we've really got to just break the old the old religions. It's time that they've got to not no disrespect, no disrespect. They brought us to where we are now. But the divine feminine for me, just like what Reverend Andrea and Reverend Lori were just talking about. We've got we've got to have a, a spirituality that is heart based, that is intuitive based to bring forth um, what's missing in this world, basically, to charge everybody with the power of their own their own intuitive yearnings and to let those come out. And I think the divine feminine nurtures that, encourages that, insists upon that. And so right now for for all of us, I think to to encourage that or teach that or inspire that, or as we learned from Rick Tamlin, to activate that divine feminine. It isn't about dressing up in better clothes or wearing high heels. It's about like what Reverend Lori said, opening up to the intuitive as your guide into the still small voice. It's like the, you know, we call it the divine feminine and, we, and our ideas of femininity come up, yet it's so beyond that. It is so beyond how we interpret it in the human. It's like, it, 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 it's beyond that. It, it's a circuitry. It's a channel to to click into to live life. You know, the word circuitry just made me think of something. So three of us in this group, Reverend Andrea, Reverend Lori, and I are all in a in a class, Advanced Consciousness Studies class. And the book that we're reading right now that we're studying is by Amit Goswami called the Everything Answer Book. And the chapter that we are going to be talking about in class tonight speaks to this very thing. And there's a section in the chapter that we're working on that speaks mm -hmm. to how there are no brain circuits for, for the higher, more intuitive feelings. Um, and uh, what does it say here? Uh, there is no brain circuit for unconditional love, no brain circuit for goodness in general, or for beauty or abundance or justice or wholeness. And all of that really speaks to the divine feminine, the still small voice, you know, who and what we are at our core, you know, whatever you want to call it. And that we can't get there by thinking to it. We can't get there by using our brains and our minds. We have to, we have to allow for it to come up through feeling and not feeling as in like emotion feeling, but just feeling that energy, that movement of vital energy, just allow it to flow up so that I'm so glad that you said that word because that, that totally sparked what it is that we're going to be talking about tonight. Oh, that's yeah. Great. And I just want to remind all of us, too, that um, the divine masculine and feminine exist in all of us. Not It is not determined by the mm -hmm. gender that we are, you know. Um, yes. And and also um, in another article that I was reading, which I think is, is really um, a, a good analogy to use, is that the, the most reviled leaders in modern history are Hit, Hitler and Stalin. And neither of them had the slightest trace of feminine, uh, feminine nature. Um, you know, they were pure, toxic, masculine nature and caused a lot of suffering and death. And then in, ex in ex uh, the extreme opposite, we have Lincoln and Gandhi, who were, you know, all, all about peace and reconciliation. And, um, you know, they were very much um, about creativity and, and connection. So, um, you know, we all have the feminine and the masculine energies um, and they can go from anywhere from the extreme toxic to the, to the very much um, extreme divine. Yeah. yeah that's, you bring up that point of balance, right? It's all about, let's break, we've got to bring balance inside of ourselves and then the world will follow suit. And, and I love the two, we do need the two, we do need the two, but the feminine has been just ignored. It's just been ignored. And, and so here we are. Yes. <laughs> Ignore no longer. It is not an option. The balance between be and do. Mm -hmm. And we're a very do based culture. Uh, again, with that collective consciousness, it's part of our culture to do, do, do. And uh, be is so important now. 
And as we move forward, creating the world that works for everyone, being is going to be central to that. And that is, I think, all our desires now is to create a world where everyone can thrive. And when you're tapped into that divine femininity and that, in that intuition, that's where you sense oneness. That's where you sense your connection to others. And once you have that sense, there is no choice but to love only. From that place, there is no other choice. And I think there would never be wars or division like we're experiencing right now. That could not happen if everybody was tapped into that divine feminine mm -hmm. and wanting to, wanting the best for one another. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's really the, the truth below the surface. And I don't even think, you know, some people say, oh, you really have to dig deep and, you know, pull those, yeah, really look for it. But that's not true. I think it's very, it's right there. And it's just, it's just begging to be seen, begging to come into the light. And, and we do that by holding that space, by being in that space of love only, so that in our presence, people can breathe and they can feel safe that they are in that, that womb of creation with you. And, uh, you know, that, that helps us to let our guard down and to connect with other people. So going forward, I think it's key to creating a, a wonderful experience for everyone on this planet. Yeah. You know, last time we were on this call, um, uh, I talked a little bit about um, a practice that I was encouraging other people to check into, and that is to spend some time softly gazing into the pupils of your eyes. Because when you do that, you feel, well, you don't just feel like, well, it's just awesome, okay? And it, you definitely transcend the physical body because when you look to the pupils of your eyes, there is a consciousness that is so clearly not this physical body. Um, and I think that, you know, that this manifest physical world that we live in um, it tends to focus on you know, conquering, controlling, competing, because you're seeing a lot of physical, concrete stuff, you know. But when you do, when you meditate and when you commune with spirit, um, which gazing into the, to the pupils of your own eyes is a practice of communing with that consciousness, that spirit, um, it, you know, you can't help but to start to feel connected to other life. Um, and I think that's just, I think that's um, one way of helping us move toward the, the practicing the divine feminine and intuition is by engaging with that consciousness that is so clearly right where we are. Mm -hmm. oh, totally. I, I think too, you know, we, we spoke a little bit about the race consciousness and what's, what's hanging out in there that's, that um, turns people away from the divine feminine, just the, that old thinking about you know, a man needs to be a man, all that garbage. And and I, I love seeing I love seeing men coming into like our to science of mind because they've they're I, I see most of them are very balanced, but they, they honor the divine feminine inside of themselves. And you can see how how um, whole beings they are. And you don't have to just be in science of mind. I just think men who are able to straddle both both parts of their divinity, if you want to call it that. Um, that they're just really complete people. And when we have role models like that in the world, like we spoke, like you spoke about Gandhi, and, and I would say Obama as well, um, that he is a president, he embodied both both sides. And, and I think the more role models we have showing that and, and what, what kind of a life you can be, you can still be strong and also have that vulnerable, loving side to model that behavior to others in the right in the world allows people to come more men to come into it and say well I, I feel safe in that and that looks good to me and and I I feel you know that doesn't take anything away from me to be able to open up to that side I think but I think we need role models out there to so that people see oh oh I can have both and not lose anything any part of me you know that's interesting, wow. Reverend Dale, because you have a question that you you sent us a bunch of a bunch of questions to ponder and contemplate yeah. a few days ago, and so the last question, um, which was, "Who are your sheroes that best personify the divine feminine?" 
I thought a lot about this and ultimately there were two men that I included because even though they're not she's, they really are two men who in my life just embrace the divine feminine within and just exude it in such beautiful, powerful ways. And so, you know, I don't know if maybe we want to like segue into that because I really want to talk about the people and the things on the list. Um, so for me, you know, that question, I thought about it in different categories of my life because I just sort of thought, okay, who, who inspires, who are amazing influences, who really stands out for me? And so there was real life fiction, music, and then just like general overall inspiration. So in real life, for me, my daughter came first. Um, because she just, she, I mean, I talked about her a little bit the last time we were together and I've talked about her several times on different podcasts and in class and just in conversation, but she is such a powerhouse. I mean, she, from the get go, from when she just came out of the womb, you know, was not interested in breastfeeding, was hopping off my body, like a little frog on the way to like go and get things done and meet people and, you know, out into the world kind of thing. And that's been her personality, her driving personality, that leadership personality, um, while still, you know, even though she's, she wouldn't call herself a tomboy, but she's been very, very strong, but she's also just completely embraced the femininity of who she is. And she's as much girly girl as she is super strong tomboy, just like super great combination. And it's all because she knows who she is and she she lives it every single moment of every single day. She is so much more confident than I was at her age. And it is just extraordinary to just sort of sit back and like be part of that ride, you know, that is our daughter. So there's her. There are a couple of other people who really stand out for me. Um, but ultimately, when it kind of comes down to the two men, there's my husband, Glenn. And he is just, he's, you know, some people might call him sort of like a strong, silent type, but he is, there's just something so graceful about him, so gracious about him, so soft about him. And he is so present and so loving and so kind in a very, you know, quiet way while still really being, you know, strong in a masculine kind of way. And and he, when when we first became friends and started, you know, sort of switching over into, you know, we're going to be together in a different way, it really felt like he created space for me to be held in love in, in ways that I had never, ever experienced before. And to feel that coming from, you know, someone else and someone else who was a man was was just amazing and the other man that i'm going to mention here we all know is dr james yes. and i mean if there is you know anyone who shows you know the vulnerability the tenderness um you know along with the strength and the power and the i know exactly who and what i am it is our teacher, Dr. James. And, and I know there are many out there who will, you know, think and say the same thing. So he he really stands out for me just as much as my husband does. And then fiction, I was thinking of all the movies and the series and the books and everything that I've read. And even though there are a few standouts, the one that stands out for me the most, and I'm going to preface this by saying I have not seen the final season, so don't go talking about it, is... Daenerys Targaryen in Game oh. of Thrones. I mean, if there was ever, you know, an embodiment and an example of the divine feminine, you know, Daenerys Targaryen, who starts out as a character that is property, that is sold, you know, basically into slavery of a, you know, leader of a nomadic tribe. And then she comes into her own and basically demands a different kind of dynamic and relationship between herself and her husband. And then when he ends up dying, she becomes the leader and just, you know, becomes the mother of dragons and cares for, you know, herself, her dragon children, offspring, you know, her tribe and has like the bigger picture in mind and is beautiful and powerful and kick ass and, and just, you know, soft and everything all at once. I mean, she's it. <laughs> 
so so there's that. And then when I think of music, there Annie Lennox comes to mind. Annie Lennox and Cindy Lauper and Katie Lang, three mm. big for me who, you know, started out as something, reinvented themselves, grow, you know, grew, evolved, you know, went into different genres of music and their their talent, the music that they put out, their personalities, their persona, their charisma, their presence just you know embodies it all every single aspect of the divine feminine and and then the one that i really wanted to mention today which has been a continual overall inspiration for me i don't even know when i started following her was or is kate northrup who is christian northrup's daughter and um she I've been following her for, I think, maybe at least 10 years. And just recently, she sent out a newsletter uh, a few days ago where she wrote a prayer and sent it out the day before the election took place. And I just wanted to read some of it because it was so amazing. She starts, hey there, divine, all that is, source, universe, ancestors, angels, goddess, God. Today I pray for and I'm committed to being part of creating a world in which... With each sunrise, each wiggle of our toes, and each breath that expands our rib cages, we remember that we are part of nature, not here to control it, and that our decisions reflect this remembering. Restorative justice and making space for ourselves and others to make mistakes and repair and heal is standard and welcome. We trust in our body's innate ability to tell us the truth and heal, and that everyone has the right to decide what goes into and comes out of their own bodies. There is no such thing as a marginalized person and our differences are sources of celebration, strength and connection. Everyone's identity is affirmed and welcome. And she goes on and on and on with so many amazing points. All kinds of love are celebrated. Rest is honored as much as action. What is life giving is the priority. Peace mm -hmm. prevails through true healing and ends it with and love leads. Thank you for the knowledge and trust that is this that this future is now in some ways and in any of the ways that it's not an immediate existence is just around the corner. And so it is. Wow. It's that was so wonderful. Amazing. Thank you. And so she started out with someone who had trouble managing money, was in massive debt, came out of it, wrote a book called Money, A Love Story. Then she, along with who is now her husband, started, you know, or kind of evolved, you know, the business together. They have since had two children. And she just opens herself up about everything like to everyone like this is who i am this is my story my family's important to me so is my business i can have it all this is how i do it by doing less and being more um mm -hmm. she has this origin community where they really talk about like the moon and the body and, and the cycles of life and femininity and so for mm -hmm. me she just is is such an incredible inspiration i love pretty much everything she writes and when i saw that prayer I just thought I want to share it because it was just so poignant. And the fact that she ends it on, and so it is, <laughs> is one of us. super cool too. So. What's her name again, Leslie? I wanted her to. Her name is Kate Northrup. Kate. And I love I love her mom. She is amazing. And I, I know who her mom is. I haven't listened yeah. to much or, or read much of hers. But, but yeah, Kate is a dynamo and cool. spiritual badass powerhouse for sure. I'm so glad you brought her into our awareness. I I, I got to check her out. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so do less and be more. Yeah. Wow. I am. That's that's going to go right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's such an important piece of the divine feminine. Like Lori was saying, and you just said that that there's so much value in the rest in the gestation. That's that's where all is born. Right. All these great ideas come forth. So. So I look forward to a, a world where we have more siesta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, and, and ironically, that's a world where more will get done. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. how, you know, because we're, we're not good at operating things when we're tired and we're, and we're fried out. So, you know, when you're well rested, it's like, God, I don't know about you, but boy, I'm well rested. I get like a 10 times at least uh, things done with ease and grace. When mm -hmm. I'm tired, it's like, oh. <laughs> 
you know, and I think older. that that um, relates to the way the brain functions because when mm -hmm. we're tired, we're operating from the fight flight mechanism, that pain pleasure center of the brain. Mm -hmm. um, and when we're rested, we have access to the prefrontal cortex, which is that executive decision maker, creativity, um, mm -hmm. conscious part of ourselves. And um, and I think that um, what were you you were saying something about. Um, Oh, now it slipped my mind. Um, oh, no, I know what I was going to say. Is uh, Yeah, I think that taking um, taking time in the middle of the day, for me, it, it allows me, like I seriously spend a good 30 to 45 minutes every day at about 1 o'clock um, going within. Sometimes I fall asleep, sometimes I don't, but I'm always doing meditation or listening to a spiritual talk or, or something along those lines because it helps me recalibrate and access that prefrontal cortex and get out of the fight, flight, conquer, control, you know, manipulate, fix it area of my brain. It's really, it's really important for me. I, I know that for sure. It allows yeah. me to be more feminine, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I love that. It's really uh, useful to understand that about our brains, right? That, that, that higher reasoning does shut down when we get in driven behavior. When we're in fight or flight, it's just like, it's like you're a broadcast, a receiving station, and you're just turning off. All the, all that's trying to come through is just ending up hanging in suspended animation, waiting for us to calm down so it mm -hmm. can continue to, to come in and download. And yeah. uh, I think, I don't know that everybody understands that, the whole idea of, you know, when you're in fear or you're driven, that you, you lose access to that higher reasoning. And yeah. we can see a lot of that happening in our world right now, just to, to make it relevant, oh, right. that people have lost their their ability to reason in some cases when they are in fear. They're, they're not making any sense. Well, that's because they can't make sense because they're, they've shut that down and they've activated their fight or flight and their amygdala. And, you know, that's, that's their only path in that moment until they calm down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why yeah. it's so important and for us to it's, be calm. It's very much um, noted in the book that we're reading too, the Everything Answers yes. book about that, mm -hmm. how important it is to um, uh, to have a peaceful, calm state of mind because that's when um, intuition is able to be heard, right? It, it, it transcends mm -hmm. the, even the prefrontal cortex, accessing the prefrontal cortex. It's, go, it's beyond the physical mind. It is the spirit connection with um with with that divine spiritual feminine and masculine energy and it cannot be heard when we're distracted with stressful thinking for sure mm -hmm. yeah. exactly um, a thread that i want to pull back in and I, a couple of you guys had mentioned is the divine feminine as being um about nature the connection that that it is about nature outside of ourselves and i think the nature of who we are and, and a little bit of what let the po the prayer lesia was reading it talked about just how good it is for the, the natural person that we are the nature of who we are the rhythm of our rhythm to be expressed and we talk a lot about this in science of mind when we don't allow our unique divine essence to be brought forward into this world we everything just gets screwed up i'll just put it that way and i think the divine feminine it's being all about unconditional love allows whatever whatever that is without judgment and and how beautiful that is um, and to have in our world today because we you know this whole mask thing that was take or is still I forget it's still taking place there's just such a new drama now that's in front of mine but this whole mask thing with it it being um, you know this being interpreted as not being free in who we are to me it was just symbolic of what a big problem people have inside of themselves because it really you know, it, it, this was just about protecting people, but it, it went to this really strange emotional level with people. And I think it just, it, it's just reflecting, people don't feel comfortable being who they are. There, there's there's this thing about, and we and we see it in this lack of, of acceptance of people who are different, whether it's, you know, your sexual orientation or the expression of who you are. And and this divine feminine to me really is, is giving people the um the permission to be who they are because they're loved unconditionally and and i just think that's such an important uh as such an important thing for people to be broadcasting to uh, to this world so that we can you know stop the just stop the divisiveness mm. 
Who would like to share? I love the, so Lesia opened the door for our last question. I know, don't you love going all over the place? <laughs> Isn't that the divine, the divine feminine leads where she wants us to be led, right? So we do not question. Um, who, does anybody else want to answer that question? Your Shiro's, and Lesia, I loved how broad you made it. I love that you really stretched it. But that's what Lesia does. So I love yes, <laughs> and 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 for me, that's my experience as well. I feel so uh, grateful and blessed for the people that I am surrounded by divine feminine energy in the form of both male and female. Everywhere I look, uh, there is no one in my life currently who who I am close to who is in my, you know, even my secondary circle or thirdary circle that is not um, an expression of that balance between the masculine, the divine masculine, the divine feminine. And certainly, I everything you said about your husband, I could say about my husband. He is the most balanced guy I've ever met in terms of feminine and masculine. You know. Uh, <laughs> A scotch, a cigar, and football, or theater, and musical theater. I mean, you know, he's just, he's just got this open, loving heart, and he can, he can dance in any arena he chooses and be comfortable. And uh, isn't that wonderful, you know, to be able to pretty much fit in anywhere that you, that you choose to. So, um, and I'd say also, I want one of those, Reverend Lori. I want to <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll Luke tell you. Watch football. And go for, wait, what'd you say, Reverend Lori? Paint your nails. Paint your nails too. That might be our next topic. <laughs> our next <Right>? show. <laughs> Matchmaking by the four mavens. Matchmaking by the mind <laughs> style. <laughs> There you go. Well, you know, it's it. I think it, for me, it came to the point in my life where I realized I had to be the person that I wanted to attract. I had to be balanced. I had to be all those things that I wanted in, to find in somebody else. That it was, it was incumbent on me to be that. And and you are that. So, ta-da! It's already done. If that's what you want, then it's yours. <laughs> well, I know that. Right. So it is. Bada bing, bada boom. I'd, say, I'd also say like um, one of my sheroes as we were talking, I love Michelle Obama. Yes. For me, she is just the epitome of badass in a very calm way. I mean, I just, she carries herself with such class and such brilliance and uh, beauty. She is everything that is in the title of our, our show. And she's, she holds everything lightly, which, you know, Reverend Dale knows that is my, that's my thing. You know, let's just hold everything lightly. You know, we don't, and, and certainly we can use a little of that right now in these last like 48 hours. Just hold it all lightly. It's all unfolding perfectly. And I think she really carries that uh, beautifully. And yet she takes action and she knows who she is. So she would definitely be one of my, one of my sheroes. And of course, Dr. James, not a Shiro, a hero, but, you know, he, again, just reiterating that he is, he is the epitome of that as well. And actually, yeah, all, yeah. I'd say all my male friends, uh, my friend Gilmore, same thing, very, you know, very in touch with both sides of his, his being and uh, balances it beautifully. So, yeah. Nice. You know who else is very um, beautifully feminine and um, balanced is um, Marie Forleo. Are you familiar oh, with her? Yes. I love yes. Marie yes. Forleo. She has a, a program called Marie TV and she's all over YouTube. Um, but her, her insights, her wisdom, her interviews, the topics she discusses, the way she presents all of it. Um, she has a program called B School for it's sort of it's sort of a combination of like be who you are and also like you know business right be for business but um it's a beautiful program um and mm. i anyway but i just love her and oprah oprah tried to to mm -hmm. bring her to national television and she said you know i'm doing it my way i don't want to be controlled by media and so on and so forth and and she's just she just continues wow. to do what she wants to do in the most beautiful way and she's truly um, impacted my life and I know so many other people's as well. So I highly recommend people check her out. Marie TV, Marie Forleo. She's amazing. 
She was on my list too, but Kate Northrup is higher up for me. <laughs> wow. I think for me, I'm I'm in the same boat. Dr. James is definitely the the epitome of divine feminine, and I, I just you know he just brings all of that to the the creativity, the the unconditional love, and the brilliance, and and just the whole package really. Um, the people that I thought of for in that are in the media, I thought of Lady Gaga and Cher, because to me they they are they're, I find them both very beautiful aesthetically and on the inside they're beautiful and very and they speak their truth they know who they are so for me as far as public uh public people they would be it and uh for me personally in my life i think my mom is really my is my biggest shero because she she taught me what it is to live all aspects of the divine feminine and and it's very solid inside of myself because uh I, to to know what what the full meaning of it is, which she taught me, is is wonderful to be able to to understand it. And so that was what she gave to me, and to just know who I am and never shy away from it, and still be able to present yourself as as the beauty and the grace that dwells within, and yet never never stop being who you are. And and when you see injustice, when you see something's not right, stand in that that voice that you carry. So so those are my sheroes. I would so, like to add one more, if I may. Yes. <laughs> my Always. cat. <laughs> oh, I love her. My cat Mercury, like she really came to mind for me because I, when I just saw the picture of her before we, like getting a cat was nowhere on our radar. Like I've wanted a dog for about 25 years, but, but for various reasons, haven't gotten one. And just as I was starting to get comfortable with the idea, I think I might be ready for my little black cocker spaniel named Parsley who I know is out there somewhere, <laughs> this cat came into our life. And when I saw her picture and thought, oh, who is she? All of these ideas about, oh, what would it be like if she were in our life? Then this would happen, this, this. And the whole notion of she would open up our hearts you know, especially Glenn, she would open up, she would melt Glenn a little bit, you know, Glenn, who is this, you know, like beautiful balanced being anyway, but can be a little closed off. And that's exactly what she has done. I mean, just by being herself, she's an extension of, you know, who and what we are. You know, I, I'm able to watch her and just, you know, how she is her own being. She knows who she is. She lives her life the way she wants. She expects her food and love and grooming from us when she wants it kind of thing and know she's going to get it. Or she can come and cuddle up and it's like my time to give you some love kind of thing, which is just, I mean, you know, again, back to the Everything Answer book, there's a part in there that talks about different exercises to do to open up the chakras mm. and, and feel the feelings yeah. that we might not otherwise be able to. And in there, he says, you know, pick up a pet, pick up a baby. And I have memories of, of how Milana would just open up my heart just thinking about her. But now, like having Mercury in our lives just you know, her lying on my lap or on my belly or on my chest or something, you know, whether she's purring or not sleeping or, you know, otherwise just feeling that expansiveness, just that, like, it's like that ache of bursting open of just that feeling of unconditional love, you know, just mm -hmm. pure unconditional love just coming out because of this amazing cat who also knows how to take care of herself and groom herself and, you know, all that stuff on her own. So my cat is definitely one of my sheroes. <laughs> all right. So now I'm so grateful for her. <laughs> I have to say, um, I wasn't going to share my daughter, Alexis, but I'm going to, oh, because um, as you described your cat, it, it was really clear to me that I I need to share that my daughter, Alexis, um, is nine years sober off of heroin. And um, she has an amazing podcast that gets over 100,000 downloads a month. And it's called Recovering from Reality because we're all recovering from something, right? And um, she is an advocate for change and, and is certainly become the most beautiful speaker and author. She wrote her book, Recovering from Reality, as well after wow. um, years and years of suffering from sexual abuse um, from a family member that I was unaware of and um, shutting herself down and becoming um, you know, very, um, this bra breakable, fragile little girl and young person. She was facing six years in prison when she was 18 
um, from different activities that occurred as a result of the heroin addiction. But um, in the last, you know, God, since 20, 2019, when she was facing those charges, no, 20, 2009, excuse me, um, you know, she has become this amazing woman. She's the mother of two of my granddaughters. Um, she has an amazing treatment center in Malibu. Um, she leads groups of women um, in recovery. Um, she is, her heart has expanded so much. And as a result of her recovery, you know, she helped me um, recover from my own reality, which wasn't that attractive, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so talk about expansion and the, fe the divine feminine. I mean, she is such a beautiful mother to the hundreds of thousands of people that she touches every month um, mm -hmm. with the people that she interviews and the words of wisdom um, and the way that she advocates for change, for mental health and for um, diversity. I mean, she's just spectacular. So um, her name is Alexis mm -hmm. Haynes and she's truly remarkable. Wow. Wow. Thank you well, for sharing that. You no, know, I'm glad you brought her up. And the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I will just say that, <laughs> Reverend Andrea. Thank you. Wow. Wow. So wow. we have five minutes left. Are we, uh, what, Ms. Leslie, Lesia, who is the the ultimate host of this show, What where are, are we going more or are we wrapping up? I think we're probably wrapping up. So okay. let's see. Is there anything? Um, I'm just looking at the questions. Is there anything? In, oh, Reverend Andrea. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to say one thing um, that um, that I saw in these questions, and that is sort of like um, uh, what um, you know. How how do you connect with the feminine, divine feminine in yourself? Um, how has you know the divine feminine um, contributed to new thought or spirituality? How does it influence your spirituality? I think for me, it's the reverse that my spirituality impacted my divine feminine. That by practicing meditation, mm -hmm. I was able to experience feeling um, that transcends this physical being. It was more of a like a, a this this vital energy body that felt out you know that was not limited to my physical being so through spiritual practices like meditation and contemplation of spirit and all the things that we do right um uh that that has awakened inside of me the divine feminine and i wanted to share that yeah i would i would agree very much for myself as well that it really and i mean i kind of said it at the top of the hour where really it was just sort of within the last four years as i really stepped into this part of my spiritual journey that that divine feminine i guess kind of i don't know if got awakened or i became aware of it so that you know like mm -hmm. it actually i was I, I'm, I'm more open to it than than i ever have been and and so being aware of it, being open to it, um, practicing self-care, which is the big thing that I thought of when I was thinking of my cat, about how she just, she takes care of herself and she expects us to take care of her. Um, but practicing more self-care, um, more patience mm -hmm. with, and this, pretty much everything I say, except for the self-care part, it's for others and myself, you know, just, just as much and sometimes, you know, more for myself. So patience, listening, um, listening to what's going on, listening to what wants to, you know, be known. And, and then Lori, I think mentioned, Reverend Lori mentioned at the beginning about holding space, I think holding space for unconditional love for, I think that just kind of boils down to it for me is for the unconditional love to just be be to be be present mm -hmm. just be more of that so so for me there are things that i do um you know whether it's meditation or reading or being out in nature and really connecting with the trees and the earth and the land and the air and and and, and feeling you know that even though i am it and it is me just being enveloped and embraced mm -hmm. by nature so that i can feel that nature from within um, that's so important to me right now. And really for me, it just is all about the heart, just letting, mm -hmm. letting my heart just open up and everything come through my heart. 
Well, that's beautiful. And I, I'm with both of you too on that. I, I when I got into spirituality, I found I found the power and the value of the divine feminine. And it just it it opened the door to live into that energy like you're talking about and and that unconditional love. And again, remind we remind ourselves it's not just and I remind me, it's not just about unconditional love for others, it's also for the self because it all starts there, right? Just loving ourselves no matter what. So mm -hmm. Yeah, and the same is true. Everything you said, I could just say, yep, me too. Um, <laughs> that's how I, you know, how I tap into it. And I'm so grateful that we are in a teaching in the New Thought Movement, mm -hmm. which honors the Divine Feminine. Yeah. Um, I'm very grateful for that. And, and um, I think it's just so important. And I loved our conversation about kind of looking out into the world, into our inner circles, whether it was our pets or our sheroes or the people that we know and, and honoring those people who, who bring that into the world and are in that space. And I think that's, that's just really important. And I hope the people listening or listening later um, begin to think of that for themselves. Who are the people that you really admire in the world and just look and see, do they, is it because they have that quality? quality, that quality of the divine feminine. I'm going to guess, I bet you they do. <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> okay, well, it's one o'clock. <laughs> the bad outfits have work to do in the world, don't they? <laughs> so from one spiritual badass to another and another and another, thank you so much to Reverend Andrea, to Reverend Dale, to Reverend Lori. My name is Lassia Kahoot. We are the Mystical Mavens, and we are so grateful to everyone who has tuned in live for everyone that is going to eventually hear this down the road um, as a recording for episode number two of the Mystical Mavens, Beauty, Brilliance, and Badassery, Embracing the Divine, the, the Divine divine feminine. So thank you for everyone. Um, it has been an absolute joy. It has been inspiring. It has been empowering. And so I guess with everything that we've talked about, maybe I invite everyone to consider how do you embrace your divine feminine? And what would life look like if you allowed for the divine feminine that you are to just shine every moment of every day? Thanks very much. We'll see you. Thank all you. Namaste, everyone. Thank Namaste. You. Namaste.